During the inauguration of Donald Trump on January 20th, 2017, a fellow by the name of Richard Spencer was punched in the face. <laughs> The reaction to this was mixed. Some people condemned it, some people approved of it, and some people went one further, believing that this sort of behavior should be the rule of thumb. That this was justified because Mr. Spencer is a Nazi. This is just your daily reminder that it's totally fine to punch Nazis. If you see a Nazi, punch a Nazi. Basic rules of America, you know, it's all right to punch a Nazi, right? Like, there's no yeah. need for critical discourse of, of it. There's no need to have a nuanced discussion. Can we punch a Nazi? Spencer Spencer didn't have his wig split for having an opinion, he got decked for being a literal Nazi. Punching a Nazi is the ethical choice, because people only become Nazis when they didn't get that urge punched out of them in childhood. No hocus pocus, you simple suckers deserve the note. Killer Mike caught wind of this remix and tweeted his appreciation, calling the video amazing. The one tweet started an interesting conversation, with many wondering why Mike was promoting hate or questioning why he'd call it amazing. Killer Mike isn't one to back down from any discussion and decided to stand his ground, explaining that he thinks it's okay for a white guy to knock the shit out of a Nazi. Mike continued letting it be known that last I checked, Nazis were still on my granddad's up on sight list. We literally had a huge world war. We had to tag up with other countries mm -hmm. to beat the f out of the Nazis because they were wiping out a race of people. And y'all like, yo, let's hear them out. Man, let's hear what they're talking about. Let's see what they're about. I know it's fun to do the mental gymnastics of deciding whether or not Plato or Socrates or Jaden Smith or whoever else in your Philosophy 101 text would agree with your logical conclusion that punching Nazis is bad because violence is not the answer, but no one cares. It's always good to knock out Nazis. Like, what the f***? Like, why are you why having a Yo, discussion about that? Like I said, Nazis are totally fine for punching, especially when they've got a glass jaw. All of this in spite of the fact that, according to Mr. Spencer, Mr. Spencer is not a Nazi. The leftist protesters, no, I'm not a neo-Nazi. You like black people? Well, why do you, yeah, why sure. do you do some neo-Nazis love you if you're not a neo-Nazi? Neo-Nazis don't love me. They kind of hate me, actually. The KKK neo-Nazis? Hey, those people don't like me, Are you like the hipster version of the neo-Nazi movement? It's uh, Pepe's become kind of a symbol. Nevertheless, the argument was made that we should all be allowed to punch a Nazi. The reasoning behind this argument is fairly straightforward. We ought to do harm to people who are evil. Nazis are evil, therefore injure them. Before we address the reasoning itself, let's first entertain the potential consequences of this proposition. Punching a Nazi, or anyone for that matter, is likely going to discourage them from speaking publicly, but only by themselves. It would not discourage them from speaking in a group, quite the contrary. It would likely encourage that. And once Nazis are traveling in large groups, punch a Nazi will have to be replaced with punch a bunch of Nazis, which is probably not going to be half as satisfying as sucker punching one and then running away. Providing an incentive for Nazis to function in large groups doesn't seem like a good idea, historically speaking. While even one Nazi speaking publicly falls short of ideal for many people, assaulting them might make the situation worse in the long run. So as far as being pragmatic goes, this argument seems to be self-defeating. But it isn't just problematic in a practical sense, it's problematic in an ethical sense as well. Striking a fellow human being for nothing more than their convictions is nothing new, but it's also not something that we celebrate. Every time it's been done in the past, we've considered it to have been a tragic mistake. Ironically, the same people who hate Nazis so much that they want to punch them are making the exact same ethical oopsie daisy that the Nazis themselves made. Again, this line of reasoning isn't anything new. Just swap out Nazis for Jews and bada bing, Kristallnacht. Admittedly, it is frustrating that we cannot unanimously agree on who is and isn't evil. Yes, for lack of a much better word, it's annoying. But as long as that is the case, punching people who you think are evil is just gonna open up Pandora's box. All anyone else needs to do is think that you're evil and you're next. But maybe the most unimpressive thing about this argument is the fact that violence doesn't change hearts and minds. It never has. The best you can get with intimidation is a performance. The other side will simply pretend that they agree with you. They still won't, only now you just won't know that. And that doesn't really count. The only way to change somebody's mind is with an argument. So rather than punching a Nazi, try arguing with a Nazi instead. It might prove to be a waste of time, but punching them instead would be self-defeating, ineffectual, unethical, and... illegal. 
it's it, it's illegal. You're you're not allowed to do that. It's it's against the law. Der Völkerstreit oder Hass untereinander, er wird gepflegt von ganz bestimmten Interessenten. Es ist eine kleine, wurzellose, internationale Clique, die die Völker gegeneinander hetzt, die nicht will, dass sie zur Ruhe kommen. Es sind das die Menschen, die überall und nirgends zu Hause sind, die nirgends einen Boden haben, auf dem sie gewachsen sind.